Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, and in this video, I'm going to talk about dependency injection with Hilt. Hilt is a library built over Dagger 2, which means that all sort of complications which were with the Dagger, now those things are not there with Hilt. It heavily depends on annotation, so here you can just play with annotation while adding the dependency. But before I proceed towards the implementation of this, the first thing is what is dependency injection and why should we use it? So dependency injection is one of the design pattern as you can think for the factory pattern or abstract factory patterns. So here DI is also one such pattern where the overall idea is not to create the dependency over and over, rather get the dependency as and when required. With this, the advantage that you get is you make your code much more neat and clean. It's much more testable than before. And the best of all is to avoid the boilerplate code. Whether you're creating a singleton or creating an object over and over by rewriting the same piece of code, all those things are taken care for you when you use dependency injection. Now let's see how we can add DI to our application. So first switch to the Gradle, the project level Gradle and add the class path for the hilt. Then switch to the module Gradle and add the dependency for hilt. One thing is that if you are not using view model, then you can avoid writing this to dependency. These are really helpful if you want to add view model dependencies also. So in this application, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a network call using retrofit. The architecture followed here is the MVVM architecture and using the dependency injection. We'll see how we can perform a network operation. So let's switch to main activity. And before I proceed towards how DI is added to this, there are a few things which we need to remember. The first thing is at the rate inject. So at the rate inject is an annotation, which means that get the dependency for this from the dependency graph. So DI is one such framework which creates a graph for the dependency. So as and when it's required, it just fetch the dependency from the graph, which means that you can think as if getting the reference of this from somewhere. So I'm not initializing this anywhere. I'm just using it. That's all because at runtime, the value for this will be initialized automatically. At the rate Android, entry point for Android classes wherever you need the dependency injection you have to annotate it with Android entry point and one thing to remember is that if you are making fragment also to be like this then whichever activity is calling that fragment should also have at the rate Android entry point in the application class because that's the base class. From here itself, we are going to start our the DI generation. So for that, you have to annotate it with at the rate Hilt Android app. No need to create the components here. It's automatically taken care for you. Just annotate it with Hilt Android application and do not forget to add this class name in the manifest. Like this Android name, whatever name which you have for your class name. Now let's see about how we can provide the dependency. So here in main activity, you can see that I've just called at the rate inject and the dependency for this will be fetched automatically for me. But how is it going on? So for that, let's see our modules. So module is a place where you can define all those functions, which is going to provide the dependency. And you can also have the install in where you specify for which component this is going to work. You can have it for the application component or even for the activity component. So inside this, you can have it either with the class or with the object. So here I'm using the object and inside this object have the function and whatever is the return type for this. Next time onward, whenever it matches with the data type, annotated with at the rate inject, it will automatically fetch the dependency from here. 
Well, every time it's not going to call this piece of code, and that's because I've added at the singleton. But if you avoid writing this, then every time, whenever the dependency for this data store is required, it's going to execute this part. So to avoid that, do not forget to add at the rate singleton. And one strange thing which you might be seeing is the context. So for application context, you can just annotate it with at the rate application context and it will automatically give you the application context. So no more creating an application context, making a static object and then trying to fetch the context object from there. Rather just annotate at the rate application context and you'll get the application context. Okay, so this was for the data store. Now let's see for our network call. So for that we need to have a retrofit initialization. So here for retrofit again it's module. Install it for the application component. And the first method here is providing the OK HTTP instance. So by this way next time when I need to use the OK HTTP instance anywhere, I do not need to provide this rather it will fetch the dependency of OKHttp OK from the dependency client. And OKHttp OK client, the dependency of this is fetched from this place. Because we have specified this that it's providing the OKHttp OK client and they are in the application component. Finally, we can have our network service dependency. On this, we are going to call a method so that we can have a network call. For this, we are also having a repository because our network calls are there in the repository. So for that, we have at the rate modules, repository module, and it's just creating a network repository. And because it is annotated with that, there's singleton, so it's going to give me a single instance of network repository. So here, it's just a normal class with a single function. So that's it. Now let's see about our view model, the place from where we are going to call this method. So here inside this network view model, we are again using the dependency injection. So remember with normal traditional view model system, you cannot pass this without using the factory pattern. So you get, you have to create the factory for the view model and then pass on the reference for this. But if you have noticed this in the main activity, I'm actually not creating the factory for this. Rather I'm doing it in a traditional way. So how do it is getting the reference for the repository and network service? So with at the rate module inject, what it's going to do is that if the dependency for the repository and network service is available, then it's automatically going to give me the dependency so that I could directly use them. So by this way, you can completely avoid creating a factory for your view model. And then this is just a normal function call. So finally, in the main activity, we are only listening for the network call. Also, just for the implementation purpose, I have also added the data store. So for data store, we again have a read and write. So using this extensions, you can do it read and write operation in a single line of code. So this piece of code is for storing the value and this piece of code is for reading the value, which internally is going to call this method get from local storage. So that's it. With Hilt, it's really so simple to add dependency injection to your Android application without adding the complexity. So if you have liked this video, then do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe this channel to get videos of this kind. And stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you.